Turn with me today, if you will, to Joshua chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 9, and it says this. When all the people were safely across, the Lord said to Joshua, Tell the twelve men chosen for a special task, one from each tribe, each to take a stone from where the priests are, and standing in the middle of the Jordan, and to carry them out a pile, and pile them up as a monument at the place where you camp tonight. So Joshua summoned the twelve men, and told them, Go out into the middle of the Jordan, where the ark is. Each of you is to carry out a stone on your shoulder, twelve stones in all, one for each of the twelve tribes. We will use them to build a monument, so that in the future, when your children ask, What is this monument for? You can tell them, It is a reminder to remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the ark of God went across. The monument will be a permanent reminder to the people of Israel of this amazing miracle. So the men did as Joshua told them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan River, one for each tribe, just as the Lord had commanded Joshua. They carried them to the place where they camped for the night and constructed a monument there. Joshua also built another monument of 12 stones in the middle of the river at the place where the priests were standing. And it is there to this day. Verse 20. And there the twelve stones from the Jordan were piled up as a monument. Then Joshua explained again the purpose of the stones. In the future, he said, when your children ask you why these stones are here and what they mean, you are to tell them that these are stones or a reminder of this amazing miracle that the nation of Israel crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. Tell them how the Lord our God dried up the river right before our eyes and then kept it dry until we were all across. It is the same thing the Lord did 40 years ago at the Red Sea. He did this so that all nations of the earth will realize that Jehovah is the mighty God and so that all of you will worship Him forever. So that we would know that He is mighty God and that you will worship Him forever. After a word of prayer this morning, I want to share with you on this thought. I came to testify. And I want to say to you this morning, I got all kinds of testimony inside of me today and I've came here to testify. And I declare that every person in this room that God has done the miraculous in your life. It is your moment, it is your time to declare the works of the Lord and to testify to the goodness of your God. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this moment. We thank you for this time, God, that we have to share in the Word of God. And I ask you now, Lord, that you would reach out to every person. Let this Word speak into us. Lord, let it move us, Lord. And I pray, God, that every person will be reminded of miracle after miracle and answer after answer that you have given into their life, Father. And I pray today, God, Lord, as we are reminded that our voices will be lifted up and our hearts will be lifted up and we will exalt and we will honor, we will praise your name for all the things that you have done. And, Lord, we also understand that the more we give you praise, the more you do in our life, the more we worship you, God, the more you pour your glory out. So in this moment, Father, we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory that you deserve in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much this morning. The thought for today is this. I came to testify. In this passage of Scripture that I shared with you, Joshua chose 12 men out of the 12 tribes of Israel and commanded them that every man was to take a stone. These stones were to become pillars of testimony of the miracle-working power of God. 
how that he divided the Jordan and how that they walked over on dry land. It was required that every man would take up a stone on his shoulder. Now, I want you to notice that part very, very closely. There was a reason for that. In other words, what Joshua was saying was, every man has to carry his own testimony. Every man has to carry his own testimony testimony. And let me just give you this. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Can I tell you that he is speaking to us even there, that we are overcomers by the word of our testimony testimony. And I'm here to testify today to the goodness of God. This last week, God has been good to my family. This last week, God has been good to this church. This last week, God has been good to us all. But every person in this room has a testimony. Every person in this room could tell about time and again where God has moved in your life and where God has done the miraculous. And I want to make it very clear. Do not ever think your testimony is not important. Have you ever felt like that what maybe you're trying to share or maybe what you went through doesn't really mean much? Let me just stop and tell you. I don't care how minor it seems. I don't care how great it seems or where it is in between. Do not ever think for a moment that your testimony is not important. I need a little more on, on the monitor, if you will. According to the Word of God, you are made an overcomer by the blood of Jesus Christ and the Word of what you testify. Amen? It's the blood of Jesus Christ, but it is also by your testimony. That's why it's very important when God opens or does something in our life and He does the miraculous for us, it's important that we tell somebody. It's important that we open our mouth. Can I tell you this? Number one, it's important for you because you need to testify to the goodness of God. But number two, it is important to somebody around you because they need to hear what God has done. Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Yet in the midst of all these things we triumph over them all for God has made us to be more, more than conquerors and he has demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. Let me say that again. For God has made us to be more than conquerors. He's made you to be more than a conqueror. And His demonstrated love is glorious victory over everything in our life. How many times has God shown His love in us? How many times has God shown His mercy in us? How many times has God shown His grace in us? Can I tell you, every time God has shown His love, it has revealed His victory over where we are. Notice what it said. He said, you're more than a conqueror. Those words are very important today, and somebody here needs to hear it. More because you didn't just get delivered. More because you didn't just get healed. More because you did not just make it through your Jordan. More because you did not just make it through the fire of adversity. But you got to tell somebody. You got something to tell. You got something to talk about. You have a reason to testify. Can I just stop and tell you, if you've ever gone through something, you got something to tell. If you've ever gone through something, you got something to talk about. And you do not need to keep it quiet. I was so thrilled when my wife told me the other day, she said, I want to get up Sunday morning. And she said, I want to testify. As I stood here, and you probably saw me weeping most of the time, hearing the testimony coming out of her mouth, let me tell you, when God brings you through something, you need to declare the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Joshua said, every man must carry his own testimony. And I'll just stop and tell you, somebody else can't carry it for you. 
Somebody else can talk about what you've been through, but it's not the same as when you talk about what you've been through. He said, every man has to carry it. Why? It's the blood of the Lamb coupled with your testimony that makes you an overcomer. Number one, it's the blood of the Lamb, but it's what you begin to testify to. It's what you begin to declare. That's what makes you an overcomer. Amen? The Bible tells us that what we speak, the things that we speak, the Bible declares those things can come into being. Amen? Every te- Your testimony is what makes you valuable to the kingdom of God. Somebody hear me this morning. Your testimony makes you valuable. Your testimony is what makes you dangerous. When I heard my wife begin to speak against the powers of hell this morning and declare those things against the enemy, I want to tell you something. When you begin to testify, that's what makes you dangerous. Your testimony is what makes you a threat to hell. The devil gets nervous when you start talking about the goodness of God. The devil gets nervous when you start talking about the miracles of God. The devil gets nervous when you talk or start talking about the healing power of God. You may know tell you why he gets nervous? He gets nervous because he knows somebody's hearing you testify. And if they believe what you hear, God will do the same for them. Amen. You see, it's not just what you came through. It's not just what you made it through that makes you a threat to hell, but it's the fact that you came through it. I will say that again. It's not just what you came through. And it's not just the fact, but it's the fact that you came through it. And that's why you're a threat to hell. In other words, your personal victory benefits no one except yourself until you tell it. Your personal victory doesn't help nobody but you until you open your mouth and you start talking about it. But when you open your mouth and you begin to declare the faithfulness of God, the mercy of God, that God delivered you, that God restored you and set you free, it's in that moment that your testimony becomes a weapon. It's in that moment when your testimony becomes a sword in your hand. It's in that moment that your testimony becomes an instrument of power that will set captives free. And I want you to hear this. It's in that moment your testimony becomes a lifeline to somebody who is sinking around you. And I'm going to stop and tell you something. I want you to listen to me. God doesn't always allow you to walk through something just for you. But many times God will allow you to walk through something because he knows on the other side what you're going to declare and what you're going to decree and what you're going to say. And he knows that what you say is going to direct somebody else into the place where they can receive what they need from God. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I came to testify. Come on, look at your neighbor again and say, I came to testify. Let me just assure you this morning, I want you to hear this well. The devil knows the power of your testimony. The devil knows the power of what comes out of your mouth. And I want to get ahead of my way. Here it is in Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's what the Bible said. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And let me just stop, stop and say this to somebody. You need to quit speaking death out of your lips. And you need to start speaking life out of your lips. Because what you're speaking is bringing things into existence in your life. If you don't believe my word, believe this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And I want to say it again. The devil knows the power of your testimony. And the devil wants to keep your mouth shut. He wants you to stop speaking. He wants you to shut your mouth. He doesn't want you to declare a word. Well, I'm just going to stop and say this. Devil, it's time for you to shut up. Because we're going forward in the name of the Lord. And we're going to declare the works of God and His miracle working power. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, I feel him in this room. He wants you to shut up because he knows your testimony has the power to bring life. He knows your testimony has the power to bring hope. He knows your testimony has the power to bring joy, to bring peace, to bring restoration, and to bring deliverance into somebody's life. 
Look at your neighbor again and say, I came to testify. Look at him and say, what's wrong with you? Testify. Ooh, I feel the Lord in this place. Listen to me. My testimony is mine. You remember what I said earlier? Nobody else can do it for me. Nobody else, oh, they can tell about what God's done in my life. They can tell about the miracles done for me. But nobody can testify for me but me. Why? It is my testimony. And I want to say this. I didn't borrow it from somebody else. I didn't copy it from somebody else. It was my pain I went through. It was my heartbreak I went through. It was my miracle I received. It was my deliverance that came from God. And you need to understand that this morning. It wasn't somebody else's pain you walked through. It wasn't somebody else's heartbreak. It wasn't somebody else's miracle. But it's your miracle that God gave you. So often you may say it like this. You may have said, well, at times I felt like I wasn't going to make it. At times I felt like I was going to lose my mind. At times I felt like I was going to die. But I made it. The attack did not kill me. Do you understand what I'm telling you? You may have thought you was going to lose your mind, but guess what? You still got clear thought this morning. You may have thought you was going to die, but you're still breathing, and you're still alive, and you're still well in Jesus Christ. What I want you to understand, what the devil meant for harm, God has turned to good, and God will continue to turn for good in your life. Oh, he's in this house. Maybe you have said my ministry was attacked. My character's been attacked. My finances have been attacked, but it didn't kill me. I'm still here. Maybe you said I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, but I did not die. Maybe you said I walked through the fiery furnace, but I didn't burn up. I want somebody to hear me this morning. Maybe you heard the devil say, I'm going to kill you, but I'm still here. Maybe you've heard the devil declare over and over, I'm going to take you out and it's over. But we declare to the force of hell today, it's not over for us, devil, but it's over for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel him in this house. Is there anybody in this room who can testify to the fact that you've been through a storm lately? Is there anybody in this room that you can testify to the fact that you should not have made it? You should not have survived it. It looked like it sounded like it felt like you were not going to make it. But God. Somebody say, but God. But God came on the scene and changed everything. Is there anybody in this room who can testify? You should have lost your house. You should have lost your car. You should have lost your family. You should have lost your money. You should have lost your mind, but you didn't. Because you had a but God moment in your life. Are you listening to me? Am I talking to anybody in this house? You should not have got that position on your job. But God, you should not be living in the house you're living in. But God, you should not be driving the kind of car you're driving. But God, you should not be making the kind of money you're making. But God, but God, but God. Can anybody attest to a but God moment in your life? You see, we so often take so many things for granted. We take for granted the goodness of God. We take for granted where we live, what we have, how God's blessed us for our health in our bodies and where we are. It's so easy to take for granted things. But can I tell you in a split second, I found this out Monday night about 10.30. In a split second, everything can change. That's about how quick it seemed like it was. In a split second, everything can change. But I want to tell you how good God is. And that's what I want you to understand this morning. If God has blessed you, and God has been good to you, and you got food on your table, clothes on your back, you got a roof over your head, you got a nice automobile to drive, you're able to do these certain things, you got a good job, God bless you. Let me stop and tell you, do not take for granted.
granted the goodness of God. Do not take for granted the blessings of God. Do not take for granted that you're well in your body and you're whole today and things are going good. Thank God for His mercy. Maybe you have said, I should be dead, but God. I should not be healed, but God. I should not be delivered, but God. I should not have been promoted, but God. I should not have been protected, but God. I should not be anointed, but God. Oh, the devil would love to shut me up, and he'd love to shut every other voice up. He would love to shut up the voice of God through whoever it may be coming through. But I want to say this. You may feel like sometimes you should not be anointed, but God, God has put his hand upon you, and I want everybody in this room to hear me. God has called you. He has set you apart. He sets you apart to be a light on a hillside. He sets you apart to be salt and light in this world today. Shine for the Lord and be everything God has called you to be. We are overcomers today by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. I want somebody to listen to me right here. Somebody's going to be delivered because of your testimony. Somebody's life is forevermore going to be changed because of your testimony. Somebody's going to be healed because of your testimony. Somebody's going to receive boldness and strength because of your testimony. Somebody may be on the verge of a nervous breakdown. But they're going to come out because of your testimony. Somebody may be ready to quit on life. Somebody may be thinking about giving it up. Somebody may be thinking thinking about throwing a towel and just ending it all, but your testimony is going to cause them to live. I hope you're listening to me this morning. Your testimony is going to bring new joy back to them. Your testimony is going to bring a new reason to live back to them. No wonder the devil has tried to kill you. No wonder the devil has tried to take you out. You see, just like we've gone through this week, there can be testimony after testimony in this room where the enemy, you know the enemy's tried to take you out. Let me tell you why he's trying to take you out. Because he's t- intimidated by what God is doing in your life. He's intimidated by the hand of God that is upon you. No wonder you've been going through the fiery furnace. He wants you to shut up, as I said earlier. He doesn't want you to testify anymore. But I declare, testify, testify, testify like never before. Now let me give you something. When David was running from Saul, he went and got the sword of Goliath that he took from him and he cut off his head. The sword of Goliath represented two things, don't you? In the hand of Goliath, it represents that which was sent to kill, steal, and destroy. But number two, in David's hand, that same sword was the testimony that whatever the devil designed and launched to destroy did not work. So in Goliath's hand, it was to kill and to destroy. But in David's hand, it declares that whatever the enemy has brought against your life, it did not work. Amen. It is the testimony that no weapon formed against you will prosper. It is the testimony that if God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, who can stand against you? You need to know that there is no miracle. Listen to me. There is no miracle without a problem. There is no victory without a battle. There is no crown without a cross. There is no resurrection without a death. And there is no testimony without a test. You cannot truly testify if you haven't gone through the test. Oh, you can talk about what the Word of God says, and you can declare every word of the Word of God, and that is a real, true, powerful testimony. But in your own life, you can't really testify to what's happened in yourself until you've gone through a test. And everybody in this room, we've gone through them. Everybody in this room, we've faced them. God never said it would be a bed of roses. God never said it would always be an easy way. But one thing, I've stood on this last week, and I've stood on so many times before, 
he said he would be with us always. It doesn't matter where, how high the mountain or how low the valley or how wide the valley may be in our life. God said, I'll be with you always. When the children of Israel crossed over the Jordan River, they set up two pillars. Two pillars. Listen. The first one was in the midst of the Jordan. It was a midway praise. It was a midway moment. It was an I'm going through praise. It was saying, I'm in the middle of it right now, but I'm going through this. I'm in the middle of it right now, but I'm going to make it. I may be struggling right now, but I'm coming out. As anybody in this room, God and I, go, I'm going through it. Praise right now. Anybody in this house, God and I, I'm going through it. Praise. Listen, you may be in the darkest time of your life, but you need to give God praise. You may be walking through a hard place right now, but you need to give God praise. You may be dealing with things you don't understand, but you need to give God praise. You may be looking at things you've never looked at before, but you need to give God praise. Oh, I feel him in this house. Listen. Listen. Then there was a second that set up on the other side of Jordan. One they constructed in the middle that says I'm going to make it through. They worshiped and they praised and they magnified the Lord. But then on the other side of the Jordan, they set up another. And it was an I thank God I made it praise. It was an I thank God I made it testimony. It was a moment that they could say, I've walked through it, I've dealt with it, I've faced it, but guess what? I came out of it on the other side. Is there anybody in here that says, I got a, I thank God I made it praise? Is there anybody in here that says, I thank God I got a testimony praise? I want you to stand to your feet all across this room. Somebody hear me this morning. You're going through the fire right now. Listen to this preacher, listen to me. You're going through the fire right now. Listen to me. You are going through the fire right now. I'm talking to some people in this room. You're being attacked on every side right now. You came in here with a smile painted on your face, but there's turmoil all around you. There's battle all around you. There's resistance all around you. There's warfare all around you. It seems like all hell has been unleashed against you. I'm talking to somebody in this room, and I'm talking to somebody online this morning. All hell has been leashed, unleashed against you. But I just came by to tell you. I hope you're listening to me right now. I just came by to tell you that with God's help, you are going to make it. You are not going under, but you are going over. I'm going to say it again. With the help of God, you're going to make it. You're not going under. You're going over in the name of Jesus. If, listen to me. If you got a I'm going over faith, if you got a I'm going through faith, get up right now and lift up your hands and give God praise all throughout this room. Come on, give him praise in this house. If you, got, if you said, I made it through.